Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll understand, today we'll discuss the notion of cubic centimeters and milliliters. What is the difference between the cubic centimeters and milliliters and how are they related if at all? Let's find out, shall we? Before we get going into this thing, if you're interested in getting some word prop, this is from yesterday which is why it's there, which has nothing to do with today. If you're interested in getting some, some additional practice on word problems that similar to the ones that we did yesterday, then you'll find more word problems from day number days 26 through 30. These days 26 through 30s, we have already solved all the math problems that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition that I'm holding in my hand here, and you will find the solutions to all of the math problems from this fifth edition from day number 1 through 80. And on day number 26 through 30, you will find the word problems in the event that you're interested in getting some more practice, as I said before. Let's talk about it. Milliliter versus cubic centimeter. But before we worry about what is the difference between the two, let's first understand what exactly is a milliliter. A milliliter, milli as you know, means one thousandth of something. Milli means, milli means one thousandth of something. Milliliter, uh, milli, uh, milligram, milli simply means a thousandth of something. A milligram is simply a thousandth of a gram. Milliliter similarly is a thousandth of a liter. Milli simply means, milli simply means one thousandth. One thousandth. Therefore, one liter is simply made up of one liter is simply made up of and the, and the symbol we use for liter is, uh, is L, capital L, is simply equal to 1000 milliliter. 1000 milliliter. Now let's talk about what is a cubic centimeter. And once we understand what a cubic centimeter is, then we'll talk about how these two concepts are related. Okay? We understand now what a milliliter is. Let's talk about what a cubic centimeter is. A cubic centimeter... So, before we talk about what a cubic centimeter is, Let's first talk about what a cube is. A cube, a cube is simply is a is simply a three-dimensional square. It's simply a cube is simply a three-dimensional square. And when we talk about cubic centimeter, cubic centimeter we are dealing with a one cubic centimeter, a one cubic centimeter is where we are dealing with we are dealing with a box whose width length and depth are one centimeter. Why one cubic centimeter? Why one cubic centimeter? We'll find out in a second. How do we find the volume of a rectangle? Everybody knows that the volume of a rectangle is simply length times width times, uh, well, not a rectangle but rather, but a, a rectangular box. I uh, misspoke. Let's first draw a rectangle. We'll, we'll talk about a cubic cube in a second here, let's first talk about rectangle. A rectangle looks like this. Here is your here is your length, here is your length and here is your width. This is a rectangle. This is not three dimensional, this is two dimensional. If we add one more dimension to it, it becomes what is known as a rectangular box. A rectangular box is essentially a three dimensional rectangle. It's not essentially three dimensional rectangle, it is a three dimensional rectangle. A, a rectangle which has three dimensions to it not just length and width, but also the depth is known as a rectangular box, such as this one. It's a it's a three-dimensional rectangle. It is called 
Let's put a weight outside now. It is the width. Well, here we will put the width over here. It will make more sense. And this is the depth or height, if you like. Length times width times height. This is how we find the volume of a rectangle. Length, length times width times height is how we find the volume of a rectangle. When we have a box, or when we rather when we have a rectangle, uh, rather when we have a, a square, a three-dimensional square. A square, as we know, if you have a two-dimensional square, if you have a two, uh, if you have a square, a square is so called. A square is so called because length and width are the same. Length and the width are the same here. Length equals width, and since the length and the width are equal to each other, we do no longer use the term length and the width because they are one and the same. We just speak in terms of size. We just speak in terms of size. But here, length and width are equal. If we add one more one more dimension to it, a third dimension. It's length, width, and what do we call it? Length, width, and height. Well, let's put a height again in the height here and the width here. Length, width, length, width, and length, width. It doesn't really matter where we put everything because they are all equal to each other. The convention dictates, the tradition dictates that we represent the height going up and down. We could have called this one height, but that would have been silly to look at. This is the length and that's the depth. How deep is it? How high it is, how deep does it go, or if you like you can talk about depth that's going in there and how wide it is if you like. There you go, there is your rectangular box there. What happens? What happens when all of the three dimensions, they are all equal, the length, the width and the height, they are all equal. What happens when they all equal to one centimeter? Aha! When they all equal to one centimeter, now the volume, now the volume of that cube, this is, this is a cube, if it's two dimensional, it's a square. When it becomes three dimensional, the term changes, we use the term cube to describe a three dimensional square. Just like a three dimensional rectangle is called a rectangular box, a three dimensional square is called a cube. It's a cube where all sides happen to be one centimeter. So how do we find the volume of this thing? It's very simple. The length which is one centimeter times the width which is one centimeter times the height which is one centimeter. Watch what happens. One times one times one of course is one. But then what happens to the unit? We have cube or so rather centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. We must take care of our units properly. So it's one and then the unit is centimeter times centimeter times centimeter which becomes one centimeter cube. 1 centimeter cube. It should be read as it should be read as 1 centimeter cubed. It should be read as 1 centimeter cubed. But the but the tradition, the convention dictates, the layman's terminology, the common person's way of reading it common person, the lay person, the ordinary person does not read this as one centimeter cube which is what a mathematician will insist that you read this as because you see if you have something like this this is this is two cubed this is two cubed this is not cubic two we don't call it cubic two to me this is five cubed five cubed it's not cubic five this is one centimeter cubed this is centimeter cubed <coughs> centimeter cubed but the ordinary ways, ordinary person's language, the, the lay person's language, the common person's language dictates that we read this as, it is, it, it read this as cubic centimeter rather than one centimeter cube. It is called a cubic, cubic centimeter. So if somebody asks us what's the volume, what's the volume of this cube? We will say the volume of because they are all the size are equal to one centimeter. The volume is one cubic centimeter. One cubic centimeter. Even though strictly speaking, it should be read as one centimeter cube. One centimeter cube. That's how it should be read, as far as the mathematicians are concerned, as far as your math teacher is concerned, as far as the math textbooks are concerned. But in our everyday speech, we read this as one cubic centimeter. Understand? Just like we say squared feet. Squared feet. What's a feet, feet squared? We don't say the area, the area, the, what's the area of this bedroom? We don't say it's 100 
feet squared, we say it's 100 square feet. Again, it's wrong, but that's how we read it. We say, you see, it, if it's 100, it should, be, it should be read as 100 feet squared. 100 feet squared. But in our everyday language, we read this as 100 square feet. 100 squared feet. Cubic centimeter. Cubic feet. Cubic mile. Do you understand? So now that we understand what one cubic centimeter is, what is the relationship between a milliliter and a cubic centimeter? We're, very, we're, very, we're getting very close to it. Yes, we need the room so we can have to erase all this thing. We are almost done. We are almost done. Here is the relationship. The, the amount of liquid, the amount of liquid that you can pour, that you can pour in a cubic box that is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Pretend that this is open from the top. This is the top. The, the top is this. This the top here is open. Obviously, it's a box. It's a it's a squared. It's a cube. It's a, it's a cube. I was going to say squared box. That would have sounded weird. It's a cube. A cube is a three-dimensional square. A three-dimensional square where all the three sides are equal. And the, here, all three sides happen to be one centimeter long. It's a box, it's open on the top, and I take a glass, I, 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 I take a water from the faucet in the glass, and I start pouring in it. I start pouring in it until it's completely full. The amount of liquid that I'll end up pouring in this cubic box, which is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, is called, is called one milliliter. That's it, we're done. That's it, that's all there is. In other words, one milliliter is simply another way of saying one cubic centimeter. In other words, in other words, in other words, oh Jesus Christ, in other words, I swear to God, one day I'm going to make a video without swearing at all. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I intend to do that before I kick the bucket. In other words, in other words, one cubic centimeter is simply on the way of saying one milliliter. Or if you like, or if you like, one milliliter is another way of saying one cubic centimeter because the amount of liquid that we're going to pour in this box, that amount of liquid is called one milliliter, which is one cubic centimeter. That's what the that's what the volume of this thing is. Now let's do problem number two, shall we? Let's do problem number two. Just give me one brief second. I don't quite understand the notion of a brief second as opposed to a regular length second, but there we are, nonetheless. Strange how we speak. Problem number two. We are on problem number two, page number 73. The dosage which we need is five milliliter. Twice a day. Twice a day. This woman apparently has a cat and she buys a medicine, a vitamin. A cat owner gets a vitamin where she is told to give 5 milliliter twice a day. Well, 5 milliliter twice a day, that implies that she's going to need 10 milliliter per day. Well, 10 milliliter per day we know is same as 10 cubic centimeter per day because milliliter and cubic centimeter are the same are the same why? because one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter this concept 
this concept measures the amount of space that is inside a three-dimensional container. Obviously, because the, because the container has got to be obviously three-dimensional. That was a damn silly thing to say. This, this, this concept, the cubic centimeter, measures the amount of space that is contained in a box. This concept measures the amount of liquid we can have. Well, the amount of liquid that you can pour in a box that happens to be one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, a cube that is, that is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, the amount of liquid that you can pour in it until it's filled up to the rim, that amount of liquid is called one milliliter. So this concept, milliliter, as I said one more time, measures the concept of liquid, or the amount of liquid that is, this measures the amount of space, but they are one and the same. One milliliter equals one cubic centimeter, we need ten cubic centimeter, and it tells us that the bottle contains, the bottle that she buys, bottle contains 300 cubic centimeter. CC stands for cubic centimeter, cubic centimeter right here. Alright, oh by the way, I never did make it clear. This symbol, CC, is what I've been using so long as this part here, cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter. Such an important thing and I almost forgot it. Instead of writing it like this, you can we can mathematicians would write it like this, and mathematician will read this as centimeter cubed. One more time, mathematician will write it like this, and he or she will read it as centimeter cubed. But you and I, the normal being that is, the lay people. We write it like this, CC, which stands for cubic centimeter, and we don't read this as centimeter cube. We, the, the, to us, this is read as cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter, and we represent it with its letter CC, cubic centimeter. So, the bottle contains 300 cubic centimeter, which is same as 300 centimeter cubed, which is same as 300 milliliter. But we need 10 milliliter. We need 10 milliliter. Obviously, it's a silly question. Therefore, therefore, this symbol represent. This symbol means therefore. Right, three dots like this. This means therefore. Therefore, 300 milliliter. Because we need 10 milliliters. Bottle contains 300 milliliters. We need 10 milliliters. Therefore, 300 milliliter will last. Will last. 30 days obviously, there's nothing to it, it will last 30 days and if you were to do the math, it's will be damn sense to worry about it because it's too, sim too simple, but this is her, here it is, 300 milliliter is the, what the bottle contains, we need 10 milliliter per day and what's going to happen is that, what's going to happen is that, since units are very important, this is very very simple, but I don't want you to get in the bad habit of not worrying about the units, as a nurse, you're going to have to deal, pay very close attention. Numbers are not enough. Numbers by themselves have absolutely no meaning at all if you've got the units wrong. You must have the right units. So what happens? Milliliter cancels out with this milliliter, and this, this day that is at the bottom here will end up on the top, and 300 divided by 10 is just 30. 30 days. 30 days. The modern medicine will last 30 days. Obviously, it's going to last 30 days because you have 300 units, meaning 10 units per day, See right now I'm speaking. Right now I, I speak gener generically. Right now I speak generically. I use generic term units, but you know what the units are here. We need 300. We have uh, we have a bottle that contains 300 milliliters, or if you like, 300 cubic centimeters, and we need only 10 of them per day. 10 cubic centimeters that are required, or 10 milliliters that are required. A 300 milliliter should last us 30 days, obviously. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. I know.